Hi, and welcome to Rethink Dialogue. In today's episode, we're going to meet up with Scott Monty, who is the Global Digital and Multimedia Communications Manager at Ford Motor Company. I'm really excited about this. Let's go and have a talk. Hi, Scott Monty. Thank you for having. Hi. Thank you for coming to Rethink Dialogue. It's a great honor to be here. You've been after me for what four years now. I have. That's yeah, great. I'm a stalker. Persistence I'm sorry. counts. <laughs> no, it, it absolutely matters. So, um, first, first of all, I'm so happy to finally meet you in real life. I mean, one thing, like we talked about, social relationship is one thing. It's a pre. What do you call it? Pre-union. Pre-union. Yeah. I love that thing. That was a good, good statement. So it's a pre-union, and now we're met. And now, of course, we're French is going to grow further. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, tell me a little bit about your, your role. You're, you're at Ford Motor Company. I'm the global head of social media at Ford Motor Company. Mm -hmm. And uh, essentially what that means is uh, I've got a lot of uh, <laughs> knowledge about social, a lot mm -hmm. of expertise, uh, not necessarily the authority, <laughs> you might think. Um, but everybody seems to be interested in social mm -hmm. right now. And not just marketing and communications, mm -hmm. but lots of different departments. Everybody is watching what's happening in the social world. Everybody's connected on Facebook. Yeah. And now we're trying to figure out, okay, how do we actually harness this more effectively exactly. for the business? Yeah. So I defined you as a brand individual because you were actually one of the first people in the world that was such a strong voice on behalf of a brand. Uh, how do you think of your, do you connect with that statement? Uh, I, I don't think I'm the, the first one. Uh, I mean, look <laughs> at Steve Jobs. Look at Henry Ford. True. Right? Well, yeah. Uh, these are people that are inextricably uh, connected with their brands. And, and I don't pretend to put myself on the same level as any of them by <laughs> any stretch of the imagination. But from a social perspective, it's interesting because um, I, I think for Ford, it was the right thing for us. You know, mm -hmm. I mentioned Henry Ford. Yeah. Um, his name is still on our logo today. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, and he is inextricably linked with the company. And because of that, and because it's still managed by the Ford family, okay. I think it's one of the most human of all mm -hmm. of the car companies. Mm. So that gave us license to have a very human representative as far as social. Yeah. You know, rather than taking social and automating it or using it as, as solely as a mass marketing mm. uh, approach, we've taken it very personally. So was it a hard sell to get Ford on board on the whole social thing? Uh, I wouldn't know because that preceded my time. They actually invented my position and then hired me for it. Oh, so okay. the fact that management was thinking about that already was a big step in the right direction. Yeah, because that was in 2008, 2007. It was, yeah. yeah. That's really early. Well, it really was born out of the whole one Ford vision, the okay. one Ford plan, uh, which Alan Mulally, when he came to Ford as an outsider, as mm. our CEO in 2006, with his team, he put together this one Ford vision. And what it meant was that no longer would we think of ourselves as Ford of Europe, Ford of Asia Pacific, Ford of the Americas. We are one Ford. Mm. And why aren't we being more transparent internally and mm. sharing knowledge rather than hoarding knowledge? Mm. Because together we can do things much, much better. Yep. Better global design, uh, better technology that we can spread globally. Mm. Um, so that kind of thinking that kind of um, you know, authenticity yeah. and the sharing of knowledge, very, very similar from what we know in social. So mm. it was really the underlying culture change that the company needed, and then social came in and just kind of fit right into that. So actually Ford was a social enterprise before they became a social business. Well, you, I, I guess you could say that. Wow. I mean, we, we probably we still don't uh, have all of the the tools and the platforms to really make us truly social. That's okay. something that we're working on now. Yeah. But I think we have the spirit, we have the guiding principle, and, and quite frankly, we have Henry Ford's original vision that still drives us today. Cool. Um, so the first campaign that everyone talked about that was the success on social, that was back in, two, was it in 2008 or 2009? Nine. Nine. Yeah. That was the Ford Fiesta movement. Right. Tell me a little bit about that one. Well, uh, the concept was, um, was different. Mm. You know, no one had done something like this before. And because of the one Ford plan, mm. the Fiesta was going to be the first car that expressed that plan. Okay. Right? So the same car everywhere you went in the world. Mm. Um, 
now. It was already out in Europe, and because of, just because of cycle times and development, it was coming to America about a year later. Okay. So we decided, well, because we've got pretty much the same car in Europe that we're going to have in America, let's bring a hundred of those over, mm. give them to 100 influencers mm. for six months, and all they had to do was create one video a month. Right. And we told them what the theme was each month so that it was consistent. But in the meantime, they were tweeting and on Facebook and on YouTube and uh, Flickr at the time, just sharing content, sharing a remarkable experience. Yeah. We took all that, we aggregated it in one place and let everybody see what they were saying about our vehicle. Mm. And the beauty is it was unedited, unscripted, untouched by Ford. So, so we, we put it into other people's hands and let them tell our story for us. So it was, was there any criticism of the car at all? Very, very minor criticism. And what was interesting is our engineers, mm -hmm. not just our marketers, but our engineers were actually tapped into that program. Oh, cool. And they were looking at what recommendations could come out of it. And while they couldn't necessarily affect it for the initial release of the car, mm -hmm. once the, the next update came along, they were sure to actually uh, incorporate that. I, I think um, there was uh, an issue with no armrest mm. uh, being uh, a, a problem with people here in the States. Yeah. And uh, they added an armrest the next mm. time around. Not rocket science <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination, nope. but it's a new kind of focus group. Exactly. Right? And they were using yeah. it like that. Yeah, cool. Um, and I remember, so when you, you actually went out to apply for the influencers to come on board, there was a lot of people that wanted to be a part of the program. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I think one of the common human factors that we all share mm -hmm. is that we want to be part of something bigger than ourselves. Yeah. We, want to, we want to make a difference in the world. And it could be from a, a socio-political movement like the Arab Spring or the Occupy movement mm. uh, where people are banding together to have an impact. Or it could be something like a campaign mm. where people are coming together, joining with a brand, and they get their, their 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> exactly. Right? Um, and I think that that appeal to that common human nature uh, really made the program successful. So what other innovations are you doing now when it comes to social, the way, like your role? Uh, what are you, what are you, what's the next thing coming from Ford? Well, you know, we, we've always got the next campaign uh, around the corner, but uh, I think what we're concentrating on now, which is mm. crucial to our success, is we're focusing inward. Um, and I don't mean focusing mm -hmm. inward just in terms of how we're all using social uh, as a platform or as a tool mm -hmm. uh, for employee communications and staying connected with each other, but quite frankly, um, how we combat and undo some of the fragmentation that, that's occurred over the last four years. Mm -hmm. Because as we've been successful externally, yeah. more and more departments and more and more uh, individuals have wanted to get on board with this. Mm -hmm. so, Part of my role as the global lead is to pull together all of the regional social media leads who mm. don't report to me, mm. quite frankly. They okay. report to their own uh, yeah. specific management. Yeah. So again, expertise without authority, <laughs> you know? So yeah. it's getting these people to come together on a regular basis. Mm. Um, it's mirroring the business plan review process that we have at the corporate level, mm -hmm. the, the BPR. So every executive goes into the CEO uh, meeting and in five minutes they can tell you what's going on with their business. So I'm requiring all of our regional leads to do the same with social. Oh, cool. To give, give us all a snapshot as to what's going on so we can all learn together. Mm. Because we don't have a, uh, a lock on the best of, uh, of social in the States. Mm. China or India or Europe or Brazil, you know, all of these countries are doing different things at different speeds. We can all learn from each other. And yeah. we want to harness that power internally and make sure we're being the best that we can and that we're being consistent all around the world. I think there's a lot of, of, of like, there's a lot you can collect from the big data that is actually collected internally. I think we lose a lot because we're just focusing externally all the time and how right. can we use this to right. engage. But actually it starts within. Yeah, it really, it really does. <clears throat> and, I think too often, um, you know, we, we hear everybody talking about big data mm. these days. I would like big insights. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the data are coming at us from everywhere, but what do we make of it? Exactly. You know, and how do we make everybody aware of what each group is collecting? 
you know, marketing and their campaigns may be getting certain feedback, but mm. customer service may be over here and getting a different kind of feedback. How do we bring all of this together mm. centrally, yeah. process it, and then get it out to the right teams, to manufacturing, to product design, to, to the marketing team to help change the, the course of the, the campaign yeah. uh, on, a, on a minute's notice. Mm. Cool. So how are you organized? Is it like, are you having a huge team that is handling all this or? Uh, I wish, <laughs> I wish. Um, okay. We are a very uh, small and thin staff. Okay. Um, a lot of the support that we get is from agencies. Okay. Um, you know, that we, was my we, next question. We moved to this model uh, about four or five years ago where we, we dropped the number of full-time Ford employees down. Mm -hmm. uh, and we really rely on our agencies to be our arms and legs. Now, the challenge with mm. social is mm. that it's personal. Yeah. And do you really want an agency representing the brand? Mm. In some cases, it's okay if they're transparent about it. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you want to make sure that your brand representatives on the agency really understand and live the brand. Exactly. And have the same passion for it that we do yeah. inside. And that's a tricky thing, though. It can be. Yeah, because I remember, be. I, I remember I did a blog post back in, wow, it's some years ago. Ancient history, right? Ancient history, yeah. Guy Kawasaki, when he suddenly yeah. came out and said that he had ghost writers for himself. Mm. And for me, the, 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 it made a drop in my perception of him. Yeah. Because I thought, okay, so it's not Guy Kawasaki? So who is actually doing this thing? So, of course, it, it affects. But at the same time, as a brand, it kind of is a little bit different. I guess, unless, I, so instead of, if it would have been that the agency are publishing things on your behalf, that's one thing. Or well, you know, whenever, <laughs> it's, whenever it's a brand, mm -hmm. any brand, not mm -hmm. even just a large one, it's, it's difficult to scale mm -hmm. at the, the size or the speed that your audience requires. Mm -hmm. Any good brand has more customers than it has employees, let's yeah. hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <If> and <laughs> in that case, it means, it means you're talking to a group of people rather than one-on-one -on -one in some cases. Mm -hmm. In other cases, people do want that one-on-one -on -one attention. Yep. And the challenge is a single individual or a small team of individuals can't handle that. So you need to have this distributed model yep. where in some cases it is agency folks. And you know, I actually just got a tweet from somebody last night who uh, said there's a conversation going on without you mm -hmm. on some new platform. Okay. Well, if we tried to chase every single platform, mm -hmm. we'd never get any work done. And quite exactly. frankly, there are thousands of conversations out there that are going on without us. Mm. And that's okay. Yeah. If we're connecting with the people that matter, if we're connecting with our customers, with our you know, most passionate fans, that's, that's the distribution model. Right? Yeah. They can go out on our behalf now. So suddenly we don't have to have the staff, we don't have to have the agency, mm. we just have to have the relationships. Exactly. And those advocates, those ambassadors, can go out and talk on our behalf. So which agencies are you working with? Well, we work almost exclusively with WPP okay. agencies. Yeah. Uh, so uh, JWT, Ogilvy, Mindshare, um, Social at Ogilvy uh, in the States. And then we've got a conglomerate of some agencies. So in London, where mm. I just was earlier this week, um, they've got a group called the Blue Hive. And that's a conglomerate of a number of those WPP agencies that are together under one roof. Uh -huh. So as much as we've become one Ford, yeah. we're seeing WPP in some small instances being becoming one what WPP. I, cool. You were talking about channels. So which channels are the most effective in your point of view for Ford? Well, it depends on what we're trying to accomplish, yeah. really. Um, you know, if you look at Twitter, for example, that mm. is probably our most effective channel for customer service. Okay. Uh, real time or near real time response. Yeah. Um, you know the the uh, the number of, uh, of of issues that are handled and responses mm. that the team makes have tripled since they started. Okay. Uh, and uh, their their team size has not tripled. So <laughs> you can imagine uh, the flurry going on over there. Yeah. Uh, for us, Facebook is great about an ongoing dialogue with our fans and, and creating a regular cadence of content and of expectations. Um, Google Plus has been a great um, laboratory for us as we experiment with how to use it. Okay. For Hangouts, Hangouts on Air, um, creating a photo community, um, just seeing where it's going. We've got over two million uh, 
or whatever you call the people on Google Plus, <laughs> plusers or <laughs> yeah. followers or whatever. Wow. Um, but ultimately, with all those, those are all outposts. Mm. We need to bring it back home, yep. right? And the site that we do that on is called social.ford.com, mm. Ford Social. Yeah. Um, and it's where, you know, we kind of own the conversation. It's a blog, essentially, mm. but you can also contribute your own ideas or okay. your own stories oh. uh, to, to uh, share with everyone else. So it's, it's more of a community than it is just a blog. Uh, and then, of course, we have all of our social outposts connected in through there as well. Hmm. So it, it really, it has to be a balance. Yep. You know, you have to be obviously where people expect you to be, but you also need to control some of it too. Hmm. So to sum it up, do you have any like, are there any principles that you have from the experience with Ford that you could share with a small business owner or an entrepreneur? I think that they should focus on. I think yeah. that you, like they can learn, even though Ford is a global brand. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, if you've uh, got a, a set of products or services that you offer, mm. um, and those aren't exactly where they need to be, fix those first. Mm get the best product, get the best service offering that you can. Mm. Um, because any of the, the marketing or the communications will follow from that. Once you've got that figured out, mm. you know, it, it's about engaging content. Mm. You know, people like engaging content. You've seen who we've been hearing from uh, this morning so far. Your content tells a story. And content, to me, is the currency of social. Mm. It's, it's what people really connect around, whether it's an image, a video, I, um, <laughs> <laughs> anything else. And you need to figure out what actually works with your fans. Yeah. You know, and, and that's where listening comes in. Mm. You know, it, because wrapped around all of this, you need to listen to where you know where they are, mm. know what they're saying about you, know what they're saying in response to what you've provided, yeah. whether it's a service or content, mm. um, because that will tell you what you're doing right, it'll also tell you what you can improve upon, yep. you know, and build that back into the cycle and lather, rinse, and repeat, as they yep. say in the shampoo industry. And then be nimble enough to exactly. act upon it. Yeah, cool. Well, thank you, Scott. I really appreciate that you took the time. Pleasure. And thank um, you for having me. Good luck in the next thing that is happening at Ford. <laughs> <laughs> Should be good. Yeah.